So here are all the components that you'd ex expect to see in a typical domestic alarm installation. We have the sensing devices such as the PIRs, the dual tech, the vibration sensor and the door contact. These are what's called sensing devices, but we also have warning devices. The warning device mainly is the bell box that goes on the outside of the property, but also there'll be a loudspeaker which is normally situated within the alarm control panel. And then of course we have the control devices, which consist of the control panel and possibly the addition of one or more remote keypads. So now we're going to have a very quick look at each one of these devices and we'll be coming back to them in a lot more detail later on. So starting with the alarm control panels then, the first one is the Texacom Veritas 8 and this is a very good basic domestic 8 zone alarm control panel. Closely related to this is the Texacom Veritas C8 and the, st the C stands for compact. Basically it's identical to the Veritas 8. Electrically there's no difference in the way it works and so on but it's just got this more slim lined refined appearance to it so the differences are purely cosmetic. And then the final type of control panel we're looking at is the Veritas R8 and the R stands for remote and this is what's called an end station configuration and what this means is that the control panel itself is simply a blank box that contains the circuitry and it employs this remote keypad for the engineer and user interface. And the advantage of using this end station configuration is that the actual box can be hidden in any location throughout the house, a cupboard, the garage, a storeroom, wherever's convenient, whereas or whilst an RKP a remote keypad can be placed in the position of choice wherever the user wants that keypad or indeed more than one keypad to be. And the beauty of it is it requires only one thin alarm cable to supply it. If you think about the other two control panels, they need all the cabling to go back to them. All of the, the alarm wiring, the mains wiring, everything. So if that control panel is situated in a hall, for example, it could sometimes be quite difficult to do that in a neat way. So just having to mount the one keypad in the hallway, for example, is sometimes a tremendous advantage. Going back to our Veritas 8 um, and the C8, we can, of course, use them with remote keypads. We can fit up to six remote keypads with each of those panels. Not that you would ever probably want to, but it just gives us the option to control the alarm system from another location within the property so it might be that there are two entry routes for example one at the front and one at the back well quite clearly then the client might want to have a an extra keypad situated in that alternative entry route each control panel is going to be installed with a backup battery within it and the reason for this is to keep the power on to keep the panel up and running in the event of a power cut. And you'll notice that we've just got two sizes of battery here. There are more sizes, but the important point to remember is that the choice of control panel depends upon the physical size of the battery. Now the physical size of the battery depends on the capacity of the battery. In this case, this is a 2.1 ampere hour battery. And that capacity refers to how long the battery will actually last under any given load. So the reason for this is because the V8 and C8 control panels will only accommodate batteries up to 2.1 ampere hours in size. If we need a bigger battery, such as the 7 ampere hour battery, 
we're going to need the R8 option because the actual control panel is bigger. So we need to calculate the battery size early on in the design process and we'll be taking a look at this in much greater detail soon. Then we come to our movement sensors. There's the passive infrared movement sensor, normally abbreviated to PIR, and this detects a moving source of infrared radiation, such as the human body. Whereas the dual tech or the dual technology movement sensor incorporates two different types of technology. First of all, there's a PIR embedded within it which does exactly the same as the PIR here does. It detects um, radiation from a moving body, but also it uses a microwave element as well, um, which detects motion using microwave technology. And the thing about this is that the sensor has to detect movement from both of those sensors, or the device has to detect movement from both of those separate sensors before it generates an alarm condition and this makes it very false alarm resistant. Here are some other sensors. There are magnetic door contacts and magnetic door contacts, um, flush mounting and surface mounting. These normally mount on doors or possibly windows and simply sense when the door or window is open by the fact that the magnet moves away from the sensor. One, one part of it goes on the frame and the other part of it goes on the, the moving part of the door or window. And then there's the vibration sensor which picks up vibration. This is a, a good device because it will actually pick up the shock of somebody trying to break in before they're actually within the premises. Other detectors might include, for example, this break glass detector, which does as it suggests. It's sensitive to the frequency of breaking glass. And then you're probably familiar with the panic button. You can press the red plunger in, a, in some kind of situation where you feel under threat by a would-be intruder, and that will actually set the alarm off, whether the alarm is armed or not. So one of the two very useful devices. And then we come on to some of the other things that we need to install our alarm. Of course, we're going to need alarm cable and um, we're also going to use, going to need electrical cable. Now, we're not to get these two confused. The alarm cable is used to wire up all the extra low voltage components within the alarm system. And they normally run at around about just over 12 volts. The electrical cable wires the system control panel into the main electrical supply of the property and that's normally around about 230 volts so that's a very important distinction the electrical cable the flat twin and earth will normally feed a few spur connection unit which is situated right next to the control panel and then from there it goes in and feeds the control panel so they're all the main components that go into building up our alarm system. What next? Well, next we're going to examine each of these components in greater detail.